Hello music people. In this video I'm going to show you a more complex way to set up black hole with logic. Setting things up in this way is just going to give you more control and more options for how you route your audio. If you just need a simple setup, you're fine to do what I showed you to do in a previous video where you just set up a multi-output device. But if you want uh, more options, more control, uh, more complexity, then you can set things up in the way that I'm going to show you here. So in audio MIDI setup, the first thing we're going to do is set up an aggregate device. I've already set one up here, but I will set one up from scratch. So click the plus sign and click create aggregate device. What you'll want to do is select your audio interface and black hole. And what you will see here, if you put your mouse around here and scroll down, you'll see input channels and output channels. And they're both set up the same way. On my interface, I have four inputs and I have four outputs. And those are associated with um, uh, channels one, two, three, and four. And uh, on the inputs and on the outputs, channels five through 20, I now have you know these 16 uh, virtual uh, input channels and output channels uh, that I have thanks to black hole. So we're gonna remember that. Uh, click on drift correction and uh, choose your audio interface. Mine's called EIE. Choose your audio interface as the clock source and that should be fine. So I'm just going to erase this because I already have one exactly like it. And when you're ready to use it, as usual, you just right click. Use this device for sound output. Now let's go into Logic. And what you'll want to do, Logic Pro X, Preferences, Audio. You can have your input device as EIE, it's fine. And uh, the output device, at least what we're doing in this video, um, is fine to have EIE as input. Output device is your aggregate device that you just set up. So you'll notice here that in you know this particular logic session, and most I think most logic sessions are probably set up this way, where you know the output of these channels are stereo out. And the stereo out uh, is associated with my interface, channels one and two on my interface. <clears throat> but let's say I wanted one of these channels uh, not to go to my interface, but only to go to black hole. Well, what I would do then is I would click here, and when I hover my mouse over output, you'll see that now I have all of these options for outputs, not just stereo output. I've got output three and four. Now output three and four, that is associated with um, the output channels on my interface. But I've also got five, six, seven, eight. These are all different stereo pairs of output channels that are associated with black hole. So I click on this. And now this channel is not going to stereo out. It is only going to, uh, to black hole. And you'll see as soon as I uh, selected this, now there's, um, there's another uh, sort of a master input volume here uh, associated with, um, with the master volume going out to black hole. Now, most of the time, though, you probably won't want a channel going only to black hole and not to your stereo out. I mean, you might, um, but I think most of the time you'll want uh, to hear it out of both. You'll want to hear, uh, you know, the keyboard track, for example, uh, out of your interface, and you'll want it to go to black hole. But because I've set it up this way, I've got way more control uh, over what that looks like. And uh, the thing I've got to do is I've got to go up to Options and go Create New Auxiliary Channel Strip. And when I do that, this opens up. And what I will want to do is I will want to associate this with Bus 3. I've already got two buses. This one's a delay. This one's a reverb. I've got everything, all of my tracks here. Uh, going sent being sent to bus one and two because I want to delay and reverb on everything. 
So I've set up a, a third bus, which is now going to be <clears throat> associated with a black hole. By default, this is set to stereo out like all of these others, but I want to send this to output 5 and 6, uh, which is black hole. And now I've got this fader here again. And so any channels that I want going to black hole, I now have to set up another bus here, send them to bus 3. So I go bus 3. And when you add a bus, um, the, uh, the level is set all the way down. And so now you have, basically you've got separate volume control. It's like having a separate fader here. This fader is for the stereo out, and this fader is for, uh, it's like a volume control just for what you're sending to black hole. So you can have separate uh, volume uh, different volume settings uh, for what's going through your interface versus what's going through black hole. Now if you want if you want the same volume uh, in both then there's a really easy way to do that. You can just um, just click here and click copy fader to send and what happens is it jumps and you can see that uh, it jumped right up to uh, minus 8 dB which is the same as what it's set uh, here at the fader and then you could make adjustments from there if you wanted it a little quieter or a little louder uh, Going out to a black hole then you could do that and So you would have to do this for for every channel that you want sent to black hole as well You would have to uh, do bus 3 and you would also have to do that here. So if you want your uh, if you want your delay and your reverb effects uh, to to also be sent to black hole, then you need to create a bus here, send them to bus three, and again, I want, uh, let's say you want the same amount of uh, delay sent to black hole, just click here and go copy fader to send, and that's it. So as I've been saying, this just, it's a more complicated way to set things up but it gives you maximum control over exactly what you're sending to uh, stereo out which you know in this case is uh, my audio interface and it gives you maximum control over exactly what you are sending to output 5 and 6 so think about it uh, you could be uh, sending something through black hole into zoom or to um, open broadcast software or something and what you're letting uh, people hear in Zoom is is different from what you're hearing. So you might want your microphone to be at a higher volume level in your headphones plugged into your interface than what you want other people to hear. Um, so if you, if you want that kind of control you can set it up this way. Uh, think about it, you could have uh, channels that only you're listening to in your headphones that other people aren't. You could have a track that um, has you uh, your recorded voice saying, oh, chorus is coming up now, or verse coming up now, as little reminders that you hear only in your headphones and your interface that, uh, that nobody else would hear uh, in the audio feed that you are sending to Zoom or to OBS through Black Hole. So that's the advantage. Uh, those are just some of the advantages of setting uh, things up this way in a more complicated way. So hopefully that's been helpful, and I will see you next time.